The Five Nights at Freddy's franchise has been creating terrifying games since 2014, and all the way up to 2021 the games have had a large amount of positive reception. Until Security Breach released in an underwhelming state. The game was broken and it wasn't difficult for this to happen. The game was able to be beaten in under 3 minutes and eventually faded into obscurity for everyone who wasn't a serious fan of the game. But I am here today to tell you that it's worth revisiting and if you haven't played it before then I definitely recommend the experience. There have been a lot of patches since the initial release and so if you feel negatively towards the game, I would suggest that you hear my thoughts with the goal in mind of hopefully trying to convince you that this game is actually quite good. I recently played it for the first time after watching videos relating to it for over a year, and I completed it, and I've beaten it multiple times since. I haven't played a FNAF game this much throughout the entire series, and the other games of the franchise are all fantastic, so why is this the one that I'm so fascinated by? I believe that it comes down to a few factors which is why I'm making this video. The first factor is the setting of the game. The Mega Pizzaplex is the huge mall that the player can explore and navigate to survive the night, and the main reason for why this is so appealing to me is because you can tell how fake the entire setting is. I think that when critics and players complain about how bright the game is, they forget two main parts. The first is that the game isn't actually that bright. I actually had to turn the brightness up so I could see better because it was too frightening at the beginning without that on. And the second is that the point of it is that it shouldn't be a setting for a horror game. A mall of this magnitude is similar to a Disneyland being a horror location. It isn't supposed to be, and that makes it all the more fearful. There are sections in the game where the player goes into dark corridors and locations which contrast with the mall, for example the endoskeleton section. This portion of the game requires the player to maneuver around animatronics which follow the player when they aren't facing them. This part has very little colour and only enough to see where to go. The Pizzaplex to me felt like a massive building used to lure people to it. It feels as if there's not a real human who owns it, but rather a character with an ulterior motive. Look at some of the scenery for the game. The daycare attendant literally is put there to terrify the children and cause them to be unable to sleep. The conditions of the kitchen look as though they're designed to hide something dark, and compared to the other FNAF games where the settings of the pizzerias were at least normal looking. And it's not just the aesthetic that I think is cleverly designed. The missions direct Gregory around the entire mall so that everything's visited, and the missions range from collecting a new item to make defending yourself against the animatronics easier and change a way of dealing with them, to decommissioning them entirely. And throughout each area are loads of collectibles to find with some giving the player upgrades, but more on that later. It's also important in any game with large locations that the movement's fun, which Security Breach can definitely say it's got. You can run, jump, use your items, sneak, and even control Freddy to get around the staff bots and animatronics. The staff bots are mainly used to make movement more thought out as a way of punishing clumsy players, and I know that people have complained that they're just there to give an excuse for the animatronics to teleport. Which is true, but also without them the mall would not work as well, and if we're being technical, the animatronics have always somewhat teleported, even in the first game. So in my opinion, I think that the mall is a great location for this game and stands out compared to other horror games. The second factor is the sense of character strength increasing. Not many games I've played show a significant change of control as the game progresses. At the beginning of the game, if you're seen by an animatronic, there's a strong chance you'll get caught. They're faster than you, you've got nothing to fight back with, and your stamina's minimal. But as the game goes on, Gregory gets more stamina, gets the shoe upgrade which allows him to be faster, improves Freddy's battery life, and you get items such as the Fazcam or Fazza Blaster both of which stun the animatronics to make it possible to run past them. And none of the upgrades are mandatory, you find them by exploring. So this makes them all have a reason to explore, and as you explore more, the less difficult the game gets and the more you accomplish. The beginning of the game I found really scary and it's because you're a child with nothing to defend yourself with. Most sections of the beginning I was just crouching around hoping not to make a noise in fear I'd get jump scared. And then as I got further into the night, both Gregory and the player get less afraid, and at one point Gregory literally pushes Chica to get her crushed. It's the perfect reward for the player to be able to beat the animatronics, and as each one gets destroyed, they become even easier to deal with. And the character bosses are really interesting. Chica's is my favourite, as she pulls Gregory down to underneath the plex, into what seems like the sewers where the player needs to find generators in the dark tunnels. And at this point, Chica sounds horrific. Take a listen. If you've played this before, I hope that you understand that this exists, and that the game has just as much fear as the other installments, 
but the scale of power transfers that fear into courage. The final main factor is the story. Security Breach has been torn apart for the lack of its main antagonist, Vanny. However, I believe that the reason the game got pushed aside by a lot of fans is because of the hype that grew from the teasers, and then they got disappointed when she wasn't as prominent. But look, the main antagonist of the series has barely appeared in the games, and how was the story told? Through newspapers, secrets, and minigames. Security Breach is no different. There are 50 bags around the mall containing emails, four arcade machines, each mostly having some important lore to them, which creates the narrative. If you barely play the other FNAF games, the story doesn't exist. It's when you look into it that it becomes a strong feature. In the bags, it's told that Monty destroyed Bonnie due to jealousy. You can understand that Vanessa, the security guard, should not be here, and from the 12 discs hidden around the mall, which can be played in the secret room, we learn even more about her. Hello Vanessa, how are you feeling today? If you care about the story, you'll find one. The locations are put there to be interpreted in a specific way, and with the Ruin DLC coming later this year, the story's just being started. And for the first time, we have a truly friendly animatronic that helps you escape. This allows the player to make their own judgments on what's happening, with the other animatronics seeking nothing but to destroy Gregory. If it isn't your preferred method of storytelling, then the franchise's narrative is not going to be a memorable aspect. Anyway, I hope I convinced you, and if not, that's fine anyway. Thank you all for watching.